Hi everybody. So welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. We have some pretty good lighting in here this afternoon to go down the rabbit hole of furniture from the past. As usual, I hope these videos will help enhance your own collecting, if not enhance your appreciation for pieces of furniture like this. But today we really have a wonderful piece for the record here, which is full of mechanisms and which dates most likely to right around the year 1850-1860. Now, one of the loveliest parts about this piece, one of the most unexpected parts about it, is how some of the mechanisms are in fact signed, such as the lock on the drawer over there, perhaps, no, I moved it here, which is signed Fiché by the renowned locksmithing firm, which is still in business today. Now, humorously, the 1846 Paris Review mentions the well-known feud between this locksmith, Mr. Fiché, and his rival, another locksmith and engineer, Mr. Leopold Huret. Both of these men, of course, claimed that only their locks could protect the belongings of the honest class. And there are many layers of humor to that, but we should just address the literal ones before moving on here, as Mr. Huret claimed that he could open any Fiché lock by touching it with the tip of his finger, and then Mr. Fiché claimed, contrarily, that he could open any Huret lock by blowing on it. So, anyway, just a little business rivalry from 175 years ago. Something kind of witty about this piece to begin with. Now this mid-19th century piece is late in the timeline of traditional furniture, of decorative art furniture. And for new collectors, I will reiterate that for furniture that is the most artistic, we tend to focus on the timeline of about the Renaissance, the 1500s, to the year 1840, because it was during that timeline that furniture was most skillfully produced. After the year 1840, the world becomes industrialized, and that's why so many mid to late 19th century pieces are in fact made under a commercial or an industrial creative paradigm. Now, a piece like this is really a welcomed exception to that pre-1840 rule because we see that it exhibits qualities of a piece that was made under the much earlier artistic paradigm of furniture creation. So intriguing domestic pieces like this from the mid-19th century show the more traditional collector that pieces from this time should not categorically be overlooked. We're going to notice that there's a real wit and a flair to this piece, especially with the engineering, the ingenuity of its mechanisms. And during the video, we're going to switch back and forth from images of it cleaned and assembled as it is now, and then images of it uncleaned and still disassembled, so that you can see the hidden parts, the mechanisms, and the masterful way that this was made. So anyway, in French, this is called a railroad desk, or a bureau de chemin de fer, as its heyday, its popularity, chronologically corresponds with the rise of the railroad. Now, it's also referred to as a bureau à caisson, a desk with caisson, a desk with these filing boxes. And we're going to see that this is really an unusually beautiful example of this kind of quintessential desk of the period. We're going to see other fine examples of this type of piece on the wonderful French furniture reference site, mablis.com. Now we might also notice, gandering at this piece, that it is the ancestor of the precursor to the famous American roll top desks of the early 20th century that most of us can identify with. Although these pieces are most often in oak and they are decidedly a little less artful than a desk like this from 50 years, maybe even 100 years earlier. So before we get to the mechanisms, and as ridiculous as it is to have to wear sunglasses, the light is really showing us what an astonishing example of modeled mahogany we have here on this piece. Now that strikes us right away. And I will say that most of these pieces are in walnut, sometimes even oak, which is decidedly less interesting. But even if we did find a piece in mahogany, I for one have never seen one that presents such a beautiful example of this speckled mottled grain. Now, in addition to the interesting exterior of this piece, we're going to notice that this desk is also a middle-of-the-room piece, a meuble de milieu in French, which is a sign of quality. The back is not unfinished, left rough, but rather decorated with more of this deeply red, striking mahogany that's beautifully striated back here. Now, yes, there are some cracks, but this piece will eventually be completely brought back to its former glory by a professional restorer. For now, some of my shots here just show how the cloudy varnish was before I cleaned it. And so progress has been made, despite the minor missing moldings and veneer flecks. You know, I think we can still appreciate this as a wonderful piece. 
especially if we have developed the collector's habit of ignoring these minor imperfections on art pieces that are almost 200 years old. And so, moving along, we notice that this row of drawers here, well, the drawers are actually locked. But where are the keyholes, you might ask? Because these typically mid-19th century interesting drawer pulls present no keyholes. And so, if this top tier, which sort of stacks on top of the other pieces, which themselves stack together, if we remove it, we can see underneath not only some wonderful joinery here, but we also see the presence of these three little levers, these mechanisms beneath each drawer, which are in fact screwed down in this shot to prevent them from being activated because they are a little finicky. Nevertheless, I have activated them now. Anyway, what happens though to disengage the levers that are currently keeping these drawers locked is that when we deploy the writing surface, as this slides out, a bar in the back that spans the length of the desk, it raises up and engages the levers, which pushes them up and then pulls the hooks that are locking these drawers now while it pulls them down. And so when we return the writing surface back and close the desk entirely, the bar lowers, which disengages the levers, and therefore the hooks stick up here and cause these corresponding notches to block the piece. Now the mechanism that helps deploy the writing surface under here is very interestingly signed by Christian Liedenroth at Le Bras d'Or, at the Golden Arm. And so he made mechanisms for furniture and art and functional locks for furniture and buildings. And so between this interesting mechanism that's signed by him and then the fiché lock that we've already mentioned, this piece is turning out to present a real documentable aspect that we wouldn't have expected on a typical mid-19th century piece. But anyway, one of the nights that I had all of the drawers out and I was cleaning the very dirty inside of this piece, I ended up getting some shots of this Christian Liedenroth signed mechanism here that articulates within the piece as the writing surface is deployed. And so while the piece is open, we might as well glance inside where we see the expected contrasting bird's eye maple here, some of this blackened wood, and then we also see this blackened leather, which is original and decidedly problematic with some tears here, but it's retained some very attractive gold embossed Greek key, typically mid 19th century borders. So for the next mechanism, let's first look at how this middle section sits on top of the caisson, fitting perfectly onto little pegs. Beneath the artistic exterior and these ingenious mechanisms, there's just a stunning complexity and perfection to how this was made. A functional piece, which is quite artful, is what we have here. Let's not exaggerate. This is a grand work of decorative art. But what a precision and a mastery we encounter here in the furniture making. And I just love seeing how this came together out of hundreds of perfectly measured pieces that fit together to make what we discover is, in fact, an extremely complicated desk. But anyway, for the mechanism here, when this part is off, what you're going to see at the top of the side post of the caisson is a square hole. Now this runs down the corner here and it contains a vertical metal bar which itself has notches, branches that stick out perpendicularly underneath these drawers. And so when the drawers are out, we can see the side of the bar and how when we reach inside the drawer and press the bar up with a special wooden peg, this causes the notches to lift into position where they block the drawers from being opened thanks to a metal flap on their undersides that then catches on the notch. All right, well, the day is coming to a close here. But if we look underneath this desk, which is itself sort of a rare experience, we're going to see part of the bottom molding there that's starting to rot away where it's contacted the floor. That's a bit of a shame, but honestly, it's, it's hidden and it's something that I'm kind of used to on pieces of this age. But per the mechanism, this metal bar that we've looked at, we actually see that underneath the desk, there is a bit of the metal bar that's accessible with a handle on it, as if you're somehow supposed to operate that bar from underneath the desk, which makes no sense to me because you really couldn't access that little handle without having the desk turned on its side. So with all of that remaining a mystery, the final thing I'll mention here is that the bar that locks these three drawers, in fact, when it's engaged, it pushes up another bar within this middle writing surface section that itself engages a notch underneath the flap here of this drawer. So essentially, all of the drawers on this piece can be locked from a single hidden place 
which itself is locked by, well, locking one of the drawers over there. Well, the next thing we need to do to close here is to take a look at the special lockbox drawer that these types of desks are known for. Now, as we have all of the drawers open, we should first just glance at this masterful dovetail work here, the beautiful mahogany moldings that we can see. Some of this work that a few of the master furniture makers following the channel can no doubt execute themselves. I can appreciate it, I can sell it, and I can film it, but I cannot execute it. But anyway, we'll take a look at this special lockbox drawer here, which is the one that contains the fiché signed lock we already talked about. And if we pan over it before it was cleaned, we see how with antiques like this, we really have to be able to look through the dirt and the grime of many, many decades to see that with a few simple products, a couple dollars worth of rags and some imagination, that we can bring out some natural inherent beauty in these works of art. And the most interesting feature about it in my opinion, is this beautifully executed little tray here, which is in solid mahogany. If we take a look at that up close, we see the wonderful joinery of this piece, and we note that inner trays like this would normally be in oak or a less noble wood, but on a fine piece like this, this one is no doubt the finest model of this type of desk offered at the firm, we would see that there'd be added subtle touches of quality, like making the inner trays out of solid mahogany. Now, what's lovely about this one is that when we remove it from the drawer or when we put it back in, we feel suction, we feel an air cushion because this tray is so perfectly made, so perfectly fitted into its rectangular hole. You know, when we drop it, it really doesn't make a noise because it slowly descends on an air cushion. I mean, that's really a testament just to the mastery of this craft of furniture making that this firm had achieved so long ago. So everybody, I really hope that you've enjoyed this online preservation of a fine domestic mid-19th century semi-mechanized piece of French furniture here, if anyone cared to categorize exactly what this is. And as usual, I do hope that the videos will enhance your own collecting and appreciation for furniture from the past. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel as it would greatly help in the endeavor of creating an online period furniture library of the most compelling pieces that I encounter. Thank you.